Hi, so today we continue with our workshop we had last week on um, emotional intelligence and um, we're just going to talk, we're just going to go a bit further on, on the topic of emotional intelligence. So this is part two of the emotional intelligence workshop. So part of emotional intelligence, we, we said earlier that emotional intelligence is being aware of yourself, uh, being aware of people around you, being aware of your feelings, your emotions, um, who you are, um, and also about people around you, being having empathy, feel for other people, all those things that's actually required of a counselor. So part of emotional intelligence is the important thing called body language. Your body language tells a lot. Um, the way you sit, the way you speak, um, if you feel like lethargic and, and your, your clients will pick it up. Um, your clients will pick up if you're not really interested in them. Your clients will pick up if you judge them. Your clients will pick up if you are really present with them and if you journey with them, if you're like on a pilgrimage with them, your clients will feel that, um, which is also will help in, in rapport building. So a few important things about body language is, first of all, we must be conscious of our body language. Be conscious of what you do. Um, sometimes we do weird habits. Um, for example, people with false teeth sometimes will push their teeth out, uh, which is just an extreme example, but it will be like a habit and it will switch your client out totally, uh, off totally. It's like, whoa, what are you doing here? Um, or it can be just the way you, you, you look at them, the way you, s not only our habits, sometimes playing with things like playing with your pen. Um, that sort of stuff is, is sometimes things that will, will actually not help your client and help your client counseling relationship. So be very wary of that. Um, action speaks louder than words. If, if I say to a client, I am actually with them and journey with them, but I like, don't look like I'm with them. Um, if I keep on watching the clock. So, so when you have a client, make sure that the clock is behind them and not beside you or that you keep on watching it. Be aware of the time of your client, but also be aware that don't keep on looking on your watch. So, so there are certain things, maybe some, some counselors set an alarm, like a five minute uh, warning alarm and, a, and then a, a alarm again when, when the session's done. Those sort of things you need to work out what helps for you. Body language is a very valuable skill, not only for yourself, but also looking at your client. If you've got, especially if you're on family therapy, or relationship therapy, you'll easily see what are the body language of your clients. Um, you can see which one wants to be there, which one doesn't want to be there. Um, their body language tells more. Um, like if you mention something which is a, maybe a topic which is really serious to them, they might do something like their hand will start shaking or those sort of things. Be aware of what their body is saying. Um, so body language is very, very important. It is a form of communication and uh, we need to be aware of it as counselors, but also not only our own bodies and our own body language that we are projecting towards our clients, but also our clients' body language. So body language is really, really important. Um, okay. And um, right, it is not <coughs> what you say but how you say it. So earlier we talked about tone of voice, your tone of voice plays a big role. Um, so also how you say it determines what the listener hears. If I say things with a very like not really interested voice, or if I say something like more in an aggressive voice, my client will, feel, will hear it the way. He will hear it or she will hear it as he's being aggressive or he doesn't like me or he's judging me or that sort of thing. Our emotions, our tone, our body language, our pitch. <coughs> I mean, be aware of your pitch, especially um, if you've got a very high pitch. Be aware of your pitch. It can be extremely annoying. And your client will like, oh, I can't concentrate because of the counselor's pitch. So be, be just be aware of your tone of voice, the emotions that you, you your body language, and the pitch um, in, in, in talking. Um, social management, um, the term social management and responsibility refer to a group of organizations 
part participation in environmental, ethical and social issues outside of the organization itself. So, so we all have a responsibility to, to our, so our society, the areas that we work in, the areas that we live in. And, and we also have a, a responsibility to partake in our, in our environmental stuff, in our ethical stuff. If there's stuff happening which you don't believe in, which is unethical, um, you have to actually have to have a voice and um, make aware of, make maybe also have a good relationship with with your 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 members of parliament, um, because we are actually also leaders in our community as a councillor. You're also a person that's a voice for people who actually don't have a voice. Um, so. Um, that's why we get many councillors who are people that's involved in organisations against domestic violence or, or so. So just look at the society around you and, and also the different causes and, and, and be involved in something that you believe in, but also something that can actually have an influence on who you are and um, the work that you're doing. Benefits of emotional intelligence is, first of all, it helps in decision making, it helps in relationships and it helps in our health. Um, decision making, having an awareness of our emotions, where we come from and what what they mean. So, um, be aware of your emotions. Um, what, why do you feel this way? What what's causing them? Where do they come from? Um, what's the origin of them? Secondly, relationship. Um, which one is is able to understand why they are the way that they are and why they they react to things the way they do? So normally when you talk to your client and some clients have relationship issues um, some some clients have, have really commitment issues um, they blame that or, or men's being blamed a lot for having commitment issues but sometimes you get also women who's got commit commitment issues and and it's something to, to, that needs to be explored why are they there why do we have them what's the cause what's the reason behind them so that's why um, why also your emotional intelligence plays a role in that. Health. Many times internal turmoil expresses itself in a physical illness, like depression, anxieties, those things. Although they're emotional, um, like stress, and stress comes out in, in other ways, it comes out in, in anxiety or in depression or, or anything else. Sometimes people will get nauseous because of stress. Um, so, so that's also knowing your body, knowing what's going on in your body, knowing what's happening all around you. Um, that's why it's important to, to know the benefits of emotional intelligence um, because you can identify this, you can identify the, these different things, you can actually explore why things happen the way they do. And that's why you work with your clients too. And, and sometimes a client will come to you and say, but I've got an issue of this because I struggle to commit to, to relationships. I'll be in a relationship and just when it becomes serious, I break up or I start avoiding the other person. Uh, and that's something that you can expl explore. And if you know um, a bit more about inter emotional intelligence, sometimes you get this gut feeling and you know there is something like a rejection issue or a hurt issue and, and you can work with that. So that's in, emotional intelligence is extremely valuable. It's, it's one of the most valuable tools we have in counseling. Um, so so I, I would really recommend that you, you read up a bit more about emotional intelligence, get more on the topic of it and, and, and be more aware of what's happening um, in that regard. Uh, articulate your emotions using language. So um, sometimes it's quite difficult to, to, to say what we want to say. Um, so sometimes we struggle, especially men. Uh, men's got a thing called alexithemia where we struggle to actually verbalize our emotions. Um, so sometimes you've got a client who doesn't know how to verbalize their emotions or say what they mean or what they feel or how their emotions feel. So, uh, first of all, our emotions will never go away. So if you ignore them, they won't go away. We can't have this, this ostrich mentality when it comes to emotions. We need to focus on our emotions. And we need to, to also work on, on verbalizing our emotions. And, and if you've got a client who struggles to verbalize their emotions, 
um, that's part of your journey as a counselor to, to, to help them to verbalize, to help them to explain exactly what, what they are experiencing. Um, that's why we use our open questions, our closed questions, our, our micro skills. And, and again, I, I, I sometimes feel like a broken record when it comes to micro skills, but the value of micro skills are so, so important. We need to know our micro skills. We need to practice our micro skills. Um, read Ivy and Ivy again um, as many times as you can. That don't pack that book away. Keep it on your desk because you're going to need that. And, and the more you practice, the better you become at it. So I just recommend that, that you actually work around your micro skills. Start to understand your, your emotions. In understand what it feels like to, to feel anxious. Understand what it feels like to be, be upset, to be sad, to, be, um, to feel depressed. To feel worried, what what does it mean to you? What are the origins of this? What's the causes? What are the triggers? There's a lot of things we need to work around our um, our emotions and try to understand them. Effective and in an efficient manner it means like work with them effectively and efficiently. Um, don't let your emotions run away with you. Don't go to emotional. Don't go to, to meltdowns or, or burnouts. Um, just focus on, on what's happening. And, and also try and be effective in your way of coping with them. Be efficient in the way of coping with them. Um, because they won't go away. And if we can't deal with our emotions, they will deal with us. Tools to regulate your emotions is... The ability to keep your emotions under control requires more than a willing heart. Uh, understand, understanding a situation through the eyes of the other and strengthening self-management and self-awareness skills are tools that can be used in your quest to regulate your emotions. This can be tools. Um, Stephen Covey wrote in, in his book, he says, um, in his book, uh, Seven Habits, of highly effective people seek to understand rather than to be understood seek to understand your client um, understand why they act the way they do um, in your personal life seek to understand your partners seek to understand your wife your spouse um, your husband um, in the process instead of you trying to like you don't get me you don't understand me change it around and you focus on them um, you try to understand them. Um, it's on flip the coin, and you'll see that the moment you understand the situation, or you understand where they come from, or or how they act, the way they act, it will make your life just as easy, um, because then you'll know where to go with this situation. Um, seeing the other side, ask other people when it comes to emotional intelligence. Um, also, ask other people, how do they see you? How do they perceive you? Um, I know we have questionnaires um, at the end of our counseling sessions and stuff like that, but, but also ask people around you. Ask, ask your, your spouse, um, ask your friends, ask your children, ask your colleagues, how do they see you? Um, how do they see your emotions? How do they see your in emotional intelligence? Have an honest look at yourself in self-reflection. Be honest. Don't lie to yourself. Because there's no point in lying to yourself in, the, in this regard. Um, because this is important to know where you are and, and how to fix it. And also knowing yourself is a valuable tool. It's a valuable tool to know who you are and, and where you're going with yourself and, and with, with your life. Giving in without giving up. Compromise is an unavoidable part of dealing with others in both the business world and in personal world. Sometimes we need to compromise. The ideal situation would be where everyone agrees with everyone and everyone's happy. Um, in Stephen Covey's book again, he talks about one of the habits is win-win. Think win-win. Think where both of us win. And and sometimes I have to compromise, and sometimes you have to compromise, so that we both can win. 
So it's not about you always winning. It's not about you being the best. It's not about you getting your way. And emotionally intelligent people are people that think win-win. An emotionally intelligent people person is a person that actually plays other people first and is willing to give in so that the situation can be can be can be saved. So how are you emotionally intelligent when we talk about this think win win thing? Um, about being doing uh, you know a compromise. I'm not talking about compromising your values. I'm not saying that if you've got a, a value where you say I will not not drink alcohol or I will not smoke uh, and someone else comes and says hey do this or that, that that's not the compromise I'm talking about I'm talking about a think win-win compromise in the work situation or in, in your even in your home life with with your spouse or your children think win-win also accept other people's ideas accept the fact that other people also have good ideas it's not just about us and our ideas it's also about other people and their ideas and sometimes other people have brilliant ideas but keep to your beliefs as I said earlier your ethical ethical standpoint your beliefs believe your your belief system keep to those things do not compromise them and find a balance between the two find a balance um, even in, in in your own belief system or in your own ethical system find a balance um, where you can actually still accommodate the other person without actually giving in to your own moral standards or ethical standards. Having control of the lack there or the lack thereof could be the difference between building a successful career and no career at all. If you have control over these aspects of your life, pat yourself on the back. If you have control over your emotional intelligence, if you have control over your emotions, that can be the difference from building a career or not. A person that has emotional meltdowns or, or, or freaking out about every single thing or, or you know, the flight, fright, freak, freeze situations um, will struggle to build a successful career. It's important to be a good counselor or to be a good career, uh, work, uh, career person um, to be able to control your own emotions whether it is trying to exchange something in 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 Kmart or whether it is standing in a line in the post office or sitting in your counseling room wherever you go you need to be emotionally intelligent you need to control your emotions because again if you're running a let's say you're running a practice of your own and you work with people and you get a meltdown let's say in Kmart maybe one or two of your, your clients or prospective clients will see that bell down and that might be the result of them not coming to you because you can't control your own emotions so be careful in all of this coping skills using coping thoughts is take a deep breath like if you feel like wow this is getting bad I'm really getting upset take a deep breath step away from the issue like an argument with, with let's say argument with your spouse argument with your children maybe an argument at work with a work colleague is take a deep breath step away and use positive thinking don't go around and spend the rest of the time what our you know next time i'm gonna say this or next time i'm gonna smash them with my words just stay positive an emotional intelligent person, as we said uh, a while ago, is a person that does not get offended easily. An emotional intelligent person is a person that does not hold grudges. So I would recommend that you look at the way you deal with with situations where you, you get upset, where your emotions go haywire, and the way that you actually deal with it. Relaxation technique. Um, be there are so many different relaxation techniques that you can use, and um, I'm not going to actually explain a few them to you today. It's there are so many various ones. Um, you could Google some of them. Um, there are amazing apps 
on the market at this stage. Amazing apps that will help you breathe, that will just help you to, to switch off um, if you get into a, a, a situation where your, your emotions get out of, out of control or you need to breathe or you need to relax or you need to wind down. So, so look at some apps. Also research ways of relaxation, uh, research, research ways of techniques that you can use to actually that work with your emotions. Not every, every technique works with every person, so do a bit of research on Dr. Google and see what you can do to actually relax and um, techniques you can use in that regard. Relax, take control, not allow negativity. That's how we bring it all together. So you are in a bad situation, maybe in an argument situation, maybe your emotions are running haywire. I want you to, number one, relax. Number two, take control of the situation, whether it is to stop the situation, whether it is to just uh, walk away. Um, one great thing for family therapy is like uh, have a, you have a word um, like in our family, we have a word. Um, so if we're starting to get in a real sort of heated debate with, let's say, the, one of the teenage, one of the kids, then um, the word is pineapple in our family. So if someone says pineapple, that means we will just break the situation and we will not continue um, with that negativity. So in counseling, you have to break the negative negative cycle with your clients as soon as possible and find out what works for you and works for your clients. So um, first of all, relax, take control, and do not allow any negativity to take control of the situation. Um, I don't need to go there. Um, in the, in the workplace, first of all, re understand that um, e each person has a responsibility for the, each person is responsible for their own emotional intelligence. Each person has to stay in control of their own emotions. Each person has to listen and there must be a positive outcome. So if everyone works together, there must be, there will be a positive outcome. So it's important that we work on to work in our own life when it comes to emotional intelligence, uh, but also that we be aware of all the other people in our organization's emotional intelligence. So um, the role of emo emotional intelligence at work, first of all, is empathy and self-awareness. Show empathy towards other people show interest towards other people and also self-awareness self-awareness of yourself but also self-awareness of your emotions self-awareness of, of your feelings self-awareness of what you are going through at this time uh, your intuition your self-regulation what does your intuition say to you about the situation how do you regulate yourself how do you regulate your emotions also the politics that's going on at the workplace and the motivation the motivation be behind why we're acting the way we do why this argument is happening why there are emotions maybe your work work situation is not that positive um, so what do you do um, so what do you do if your work situation is not positive and there are lots of disagreements we do the following first of all we always stay positive we don't become this this negative Nelly who's always complaining and always negative about stuff we see and find the positive in the situation you stay productive oh I don't care no one loves me everybody hates me I'm gonna eat some worms I'm not gonna do the best I can I'm just doing my work I can't wait for for Friday that sort of stuff get that out of your thinking and re and become productive in your thoughts become productive in what you do um, also, the other people's ideas, the, look at people's ideas, confirm their ideas. Don't say, oh, this is stupid, oh, this is not going to work. The only idea that's going to work is mine. Be aware of their ideas too. And also confirm them and say, you know, these are good ideas. Let's look at these ideas. But also then you present your own idea and don't go around and, and try and tell them that your idea is much better than their idea. Let's say, I, I, I agree with these ideas, but I also, what about this idea? But also don't be like really negative and really aggressive if 
if everyone decides on the other idea. Because remember, it's not personal. There's a lot of stuff happening in our world that we take personally, but it's not. It's just how life is. Life is to be celebrated. Life is to be great. Life is to know who you are. Know your emotions. Know who you are. Get an action plan. Decide for yourself what are you going to do in the situations. What are you going to do when, when you're faced with, with negativity at the workplace or, or even in your counseling room? With, what if you get a really negative client? How will you sort that issue out? I want to close off with another one of I want to close off with these words, wise words from wise people. Gandhi said, an eye for an eye only ends up making the whole world blind. An eye for an eye ends up making the whole world blind. Guy Finley said, never speak out of anger Never act out of fear, never choose from importance, but wait, and peace will appear. It's important to the but wait. Don't act out of anger. Never act out of fear. But wait. Let, don't attack. But just wait. And let fear or let peace appear. And then Brian Tracy said, Confidence in the outside begins by living with integrity on the inside. How, how's your own integrity? How's your own integrity system? How's your own ethical system? How's your own value system? If you are a person that, that walks in integrity, you will also walk in confidence. I want to challenge you. I want to challenge you to work on your, your emotional intelligence. I want to challenge you to, to try and make, make more of emotional intelligence. Um, not only in counseling or in the counseling room, but, but in your life. Walk in emotional intelligence. Grow your emotional intelligence. Because you'll just see that it will just benefit you as a person. It will benefit your clients, it will benefit your work colleagues, it will benefit your family, it will benefit your house, it will benefit everyone that you get in contact with. Let's get more emotionally intelligent. Have an awesome life.